So this morning I was going through the Dhammapada again, as is my custom lately, and I read a verse that uh, says, don't take lightly uh, evil, don't disregard evil. And the story that accompanied it was about a monk who was kind of disregarding some minor uh, infractions in his life. He just he didn't think that they were that bad and weren't garnishing that much attention. And so the brothers uh, complained to the Buddha about him. <laughs> Thank you very much, I guess. <laughs> so they complained to the Buddha about him, and the Buddha was very kind, but told him, he said, you know, even, even a large barrel is, can be filled with one drop at a time. And as I was contemplating that, I was thinking about when Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount, and he gave that startling idea of be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect or be perfect as I am perfect immediately even in the best practitioner of any tradition the idea of being told to be perfect immediately brings up all kinds of defensiveness and all kinds of uh, reasons of why that's impossible and how it must be interpreted differently or said differently but I think what it does for me is to put my eye on exactly how I'm living and who I'm becoming and what I'm thinking and how I'm manifesting the love that is me and to take it quite seriously you know it's not a matter of trouble or punishment or dangers or whatnot it's a it's a matter of of wanting to shine of not snuffing ourselves out in this constant barrage of selfishness in the world uh, in this constant uh, temptation to succumb to the mundane and to fall into a life that lacks a sense of purpose and a, a sense of wonder and a sense of being that's transcendent and ideal. You know, all of these encouragements, all of these wonderful insights are coming through a window from God. It's very interesting, you know, Jesus talks about who he who has seen me has seen the Father. And Ramakrishna says that, you know, I'm a window through which God can be seen. And there's this whole idea that these, these incarnations are nothing in and of themselves, meaning these religions are nothing in and of themselves. They are all windows to that one beloved, to that divine self. Uh, and that can be seen almost any way as we've talked before. Just that beautiful love that, that is at the center of us as, as beings uh, that, that tries to get out before it gets choked down <laughs> by other things. But that notion is, is, is spectacular. You know, it's fun to picture God as an old German woman hanging out of her window, you know, talking to the neighbors as they walk by on their way to the spa store to pick up their brochen for breakfast. <laughs> you know, gossiping about the day. And to see your relationship with the divine in that light for a moment, that, you know, that window that he's leaning out of is Jesus, or that window that he's leaning through is, you know, the, the teachings of the Quran or, or the Dhammapada or you know all of the, all of his different characters Rama and Krishna that those are the windows that God this old divine woman is hanging out of and chatting with you as you walk by on your way to the store <laughs> in life and to have that kind of relationship uh, that kind of fun and that kind of intimacy and that kind of ease you know for that to happen uh, one is faith because it can happen now. There's no requirements. You know, certainly the beloved is that near and that close already But but without this level of purity our mind just won't let us enjoy it You know our mind just won't will give us all kinds of reasons of why why we can't taste of that bliss now And why we're unworthy and why it's just not possible That's not necessary To accept it as it is is necessary but this idea of being perfect as I am perfect, love to that extent. When you think of all the reasons that you can't be, ask yourself what you're protecting. What is it that you're holding on to? Because chances are what we're holding on to is nothing compared to a life of love. Be the best you can be.